MSI Claw A8 with Ryzen Z2 Extreme to launch real soon. AMD Ryzen Threadripper 9000 X series launch date and price has been revealed. Leak confirms NVIDIA N1X PC chip and a new Chinese tech for GPUs has emerged. Alright, so first up we have MSI has revealed their MSI handheld PC Claw A8 and well, look at the pricing first. 999 euros is, yeah, it's quite expensive but let's look into the specs of course. Before that, let's look into the overall image here which is the MSI Claw A8 and clearly MSI missed a mark previously with going for the Intel Core Ultra CPUs that didn't really work well but this time around they might be changing that and what I can understand is cl clearly they missed a mark in the first place so they're now changing it to Z2 Extreme which is a better option for a handheld but still the pricing is quite too much. Either way the handheld looks pretty good like usual but we have the specs here so let's look into it. So we have the AMD Ryzen Z2 Extreme processor we still don't have much information about the Z2 Extreme but we'll see about that we will get the 8 inch fhd plus display which is 1920 times 200 a touch screen 120 hertz refresh rate with 100 percent srgb with 500 nits typical brightness range and it is an ips panel so not bad as for the battery capacity we're looking at 80 watt hour so again quite normal not bad also with powerful cooler boost hyperflow cooling freely configurable macro keys msi center m which is another uh ui they're bringing in for the msi center so that's not bad which will also have ai support so i'm guessing z2 extreme will have some sort of ai technology i'm guessing npus inside we'll see so in terms of specs it looks good but about the pricing however well 999 maybe it's a placeholder pricing but we don't know for sure what we know for sure is that the estimated delivery if you order it right now will be until august 1st so that is the time we might be seeing this particular device will arrive so yeah if you're interested you may want to look into it and next up we have amd has teased or basically confirmed their amd threadripper 9000 x series or 9000 series available in july 31st and we have the details about it so zen 5 9000 threadripper pro of course we're gonna look into it but first let's look into the the pricing information so we already have it as you can see amd ryzen threadripper 9980x which is the top of the line 64 cores 128 threads coming with 5.4 boost 3.2 base frequencies with a total cache of 256 and a tdp of 350 watts coming at 4999 basically five thousand dollars kind of expected i'm glad they didn't really go overboard with the pricing as for the amd ryzen threadripper 9970x which is the 32 core 64 threads version coming at the same boost frequency but a 4.0 base frequency with a total cache of 128 megabytes and 350 watts coming at 2499 and lastly amd ryzen threadripper 9960x coming at 24 cores 48 threads and of course the similar specs as base clock goes a little bit higher 4.2 gigahertz with a total cache of 128 350 watts remaining the same coming at $1,500 so these particular pricing looks pretty good I have no complaint about that at all because we already have the benchmark for these and clearly they dominate compared to the of course Intel Xeon so there's no doubt about that even in 9970x is performing very well so yeah so in general the pricing looks fine and of course the performance is delivering so this time around Threadripper is gonna be very much dominating that's for sure and next up we have a leak from Geekbench and we have the Nvidia N1X and that is the interesting part here nvidia was talking about launching their standalone or you could say an apu like processor which is gonna have of course the cpu cores and the gpu cores and it was named n1 and n1x but now we have some sort of idea of what it might look like or at least the performance so we have the open seal score which is 46361 that is quite irrelevant because we need to see what this is about here which is the nvidia n1x as you can see right over here and it is a 20 core processor clearly and it is based on arm v8 so that is the confirmation that nvidia will be utilizing arm based chipset to make a consumer grade processor here 
and I'm guessing these uh, specs are not really accurate but still the base frequency we're looking at is 4 gigahertz but it could be not that much accurate one thing for sure is that there are two clusters so it's gonna be a multi-chip module uh, chip and as you can see both of these two clusters each has 10 cores so to a total of 20 cores initially and the memory size support we're looking at 128 gigabytes so again pretty much expected and as for the CUDA we have 48 CUs that should translate to 6144 CUDA cores so yeah that's a lot of CUDA cores not gonna lie in one particular chip so this is quite interesting that they have 20 cores and of course the GPU cores so quite fascinating how that will perform but it is also an ARM based so we'll see how that works out. And lastly we have a big news and this time around it's coming from China and it's quite big because China Chinese Li Suan I think that is how you spell it. So the Chinese developers Li Suan Tech has developed a GPU which is this one here which is the 7G106 and this particular GPU is not like the other Moore's Thread MTT you know not that. It is quite better because what we, we can understand it is performing that is better than RTX 4060 which is kind of unexpected and the black myth wukong has been demonstrated on this particular gpu so even better so this 7g 106 105 gpus two of them of course we are seeing the 7g 106 first and that is the information that we are getting right now so as you can see in billy billy there is a video that is going on let me just remove that and as you can see this is a vertical video for whatever reason but that is an important black myth wukong is running on that particular 6 nanometer least one domestic gpu of course because it's in billy billy and it's in china so that's their own domestic gpu that they're utilizing to play black mid wukong and it is like it seems like the frame rate is good enough according to the leaks of course it's it is based on rtx 4060 like performance so uh it's quite expected that black mid wukong will be playable very much playable but the frame rate we have no idea because it doesn't really show it but it's running and that is the most interesting part let me just skip as you can see it's pretty much running smoothly they're playing the game and it's quite normal so that's quite surprising we do have the performance metrics here so we'll go we'll go through that so least one tech had their keynotes and as you can see they had you know they were showing what particular games like as you can see this is a image here i can't really tell what game that is is that clear obscure i'm not sure but we're looking at 70 or more than 70 fps here we are looking at another game here which is again i, th I think it's the same game i'm not sure but again we have the uh, 70 fps what another information we're looking at i don't know you can see gpu is utilizing 86 percent here and ram is 13.1 uh, megabytes and the fps right there as you can see is 76 so it's yeah it is pretty much aligning real-time gameplay 76 fps so yeah not bad right of course i can't really compare right now but it is playable so that is a good feat right another game we're looking at that is probably rise of the tomb raider or just tomb raider i'm not sure what the game is but we're looking at over 80 fps so again a, a good feat here we have one more information in steel nomad we have this particular score in dx12 2256 this particular score aligns with rtx 4060 or even better than that so that is the most interesting part here it is performing like an rtx 4060 so yeah that's quite good we also have some information about the specs so let's look into this particular area which is 192 texture units in this particular gpu which is the 7g 106 coming with 96 raster units the ROPs, and equipped with 12 gigs of gdr6 memory that is pretty neat of course 192 bit bus so even a wider wider bus not bad as for the power consumption we're looking at a maximum of 20 225 watts and it is utilizing only a single pin so that's quite enough so not bad only utilizing one single pin eight pin of course and taking 225 watts it is delivering at rtx 4060 like performance so this is a very good performance as for a detailed look for the you know uh, specs as you can see we have the 7g 105 and 7g 106 so let's look into both of them let's first look into the 7 7G 106. This particular version is equipped with 24 gigs of GDDR6 with ECC support. So I'm guessing this is gonna be uh, based on 
uh, data center like GPUs I'm not sure of course but ECC memory kind of indicate that we have the 192 bit bus so again that's completely fine as for the FP32 we're looking at 24 teraflops and PCIe 4.0 times 16 as for the 7G106 we're looking at 12 gigs I'm guessing as I said this one is more like a consumer grade where this one is probably based on data center because it, it is utilizing ECC memory support but it could even play games and it has more vram so who knows one information that is uh, very much noticeable here is that it comes with four displayport 1.4x and it has 8k 60 hertz hdr freezing support so that's quite interesting it also has hevc 8k 60 fps and 8k 630 fps support so that's quite expected and as i said the aps support for this particular gpu the 7g106 which is probably gonna be the gaming gpu coming with direct x12 support vulcan 1.3 open 4.6 and open cl 3.0 as for the GPU, this is the GPU what it looks like. Lee Suan Tech has developed this particular design and okay, that's pretty good. Not gonna lie. It looks pretty much futuristic and modern, so not bad, but that is not really a big deal. As long as the performance is delivered, that is pretty good. But I do like the aesthetics of it. One more information. In Fire Strike, we're looking at 26,800 score here. Remember, for RTX 5060 or even RTX 5050, it's over 29,000 right so in fire strike it is slower than the rtx 5060 or even rtx 5050 so it is kind of expected because you know it is in performing in between rtx 4060 and rtx 5050 which should be the same thing but anyway uh yeah the score looks absolutely competitive and maybe in term uh, in terms of driver utilization they can also you know optimize it and make it even better so not bad and as you can see the real-time gpu here not a rendered version it is the complete real version i don't think there is any rgb there but if there is not bad so yeah this gpu exists Lee Sun tech has developed a very competitive gpu and they might be entering the new era of gpus for china of course because this is probably the closest they have gotten in terms of competition in the international market compared to the you know nvidia and amd so that is pretty impressive and they delivered in many ways look at the pcb of course we already have plenty of information and now they also showcase the pcb and the gpu itself so yeah it is this is pretty much great and of course the die of course so no doubt about that that this is going to be a very competitive gpu question is will this gpu will be available outside of china i don't think so at least for now because they want to develop further at least for the chinese market they might be able to deliver but yeah the game is running as we've seen multiple games not just not just black Mid wukong there are many other games we're running so that would suggest that this is a very much ready gpu but i'm, I'm a little bit skeptical about the drivers but again that takes time so we'll see